Okay, so now I'm uh, been taking another course here, a course on malicious software, and I learned a couple of P-Trace tricks. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and enable debugging, remove the stripping. So this is the file. So the trick is this. The program starts, and if and it's called this function I am debugged, it's going to quit. Else it's going to do some secret stuff, which is actually only printing a few lines, but it could be secret stuff that you don't want to be uh, able to be debugged. All right? So let's see how this works. Uh, I'm going to run the program. It does secret stuff. Yay! And if I run under the debugger, no debugging, please, and it's going to quit with exit code one. And it actually also works under S trace. No debugging, please, and it also works under L trace. No debugging, please. But if I uh, now debug it and say that I want the source view and start it, because I have debug information now, it's going to be very simple to debug. If I am debugged, well, I could just skip the whole function, or I could step into it and see, hmm, let's see. I just don't want to be return one because then uh, I'm, it's going to think I'm debugged. I want it to return zero. So let's see what I can do to make it return zero. I out. So let's just check the assembly code. So we see something happens here, blah, 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 blah. And here's the interesting thing called ptrace. So maybe if I can just skip this line or see what happens. Uh, I'm not really sure what happens, but let's just try to skip this line and just continue and see if, if AX, which is the register that holds the return value is correct. So go forward a couple of instructions. Here, and I'm going to skip this one by just uh, setting the program counter to the next instruction. And uh, go on. And it jumped here to where, what is EAX? It's zero. So it's going to return with the value zero. Great. So go back to the source layout. Hmm. Okay, so now the it's it's <laughs> messed up. But anyway, it printed uh, no debugging. So it worked. We managed to skip it by just uh, skipping one uh, machine code line or one assembly instruction. So to make it a little bit harder, remove debug information. I change the compiler options here uh, by uh, skipping this and inserting the strip line again. Recompiling. And now if you look and opdump dash d disassembles this trace test. Then, well, we have nothing to compare with because I didn't disassemble before, but you can see here, it doesn't know where the function starts and begins. It knows where, where the libc stuff begins and ends, but it doesn't know uh, from dot .text here, uh, here, dot .text, then it doesn't know anything what happens. It's just machine code. Uh, but it can uh, uh, understand what instructions it is. Okay, so if I run it, uh, okay, doing secret stuff and under debugger, like S trace. Hmm, no debugging, L trace, no debugging, and GDB. 
run she said no debugging please and if i step now let's see what should i do if i obby dump again i know a little bit about this program now because i i looked at the source i know that it's the crucial instruction here is the ptrace this this one and uh, here i can see the address so let's just put a breakpoint at this address Mm. Break. Uh. Okay, so now I want to see the assembly code. And I want to see the registers too. So I don't want to call <laughs> this P trace, but I want to skip this one. Set program counter to. Woohoo! I actually just skipped over the, this call to ptrace. And as we saw before, this was actually enough to circumvent this anti debugging. So I could just run continue and it should work like a charm. And it does, no debugging. So what I can do now, if I run up dump again, I can see here, uh, let's find it. Here, E89DFEFFFF. If I could just patch the binary, so this does nothing. And there is an uh, assembly instruction that's called no operation or NOP, and it's uh, coded as 90 hex. So if I just put 90, 90, 90, 90, 90 here, then uh, I could skip this completely and just make the program skip, up, skip over it and continue at this XOR EDX EDX. So let's hex edit and find this E eight ninety F E F F F F E eight ninety E eight ninety E eight ninety E eight what should it say ninety <laughs> here it is uh, E eight ninety F E F F F okay it's here ninety 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 and save All right and I'll be done again. Now it should be here and not 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 and next one XOR EDX EDX. Okay, so this looks great. Now I actually changed this binary and inserted NOP instructions instead of this call to ptrace. So let's see if it works. This works and let's see if strace works. Now it has changed the behavior. It actually prints out this line. No debugging, doing secret stuff. And the L trace should do the same, and the GDB should do the same. Doing secret stuff. All right. So now, if I'm the bad guy again, rebuild it. Uh, I want to make it harder to disassemble. Then they in, in the course. Uh, mentioned uh, yet another trick to insert junk instructions to make the disassembler come out of sync. So let's see this line compiles an object file which is compiled into the uh, executable here. If I change this line, instead of compiling an object file, I just compile it, I stop the compilation at the assembly stage which is dash big, big S. Boom! Now I have this file. If I edit it, here is the intermediate file. So the one I want to hide is this instruction, call to ptrace. So what I can do is no, insert some junk instruction here. So I can just insert some junk and what a junk, maybe 4883. But uh, now when I come here, XOR EX EX EX, and then it's going to try to execute its 4883 and it's just junk and it's not going to work. So I'm going to insert another instruction here, which I just checked a little bit uh, in the manuals and I found out that 02EB. This is the machine code to jump over two bytes. So it just jumps uh, relative forward two bytes, it's going to jump over these two bytes and continue executing here at this instruction. 
uh, but the trick here is that uh, if everything works correctly, it's going to confuse the disassembler and make the disassembler come out of sync and decode these instructions after here, this jump, incorrectly. So let's see if it works. Let's first see uh, here, instead of compile it from the object file, compile it from the assembly file, which we have modified. And now see object dump. Uh, trace test dash d to disassemble and this I am debugged whoa, 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 whoa. and here's the jump and here's the junk instruction and it's indeed out of sync hmm. what happened? it's indeed out of sync and this is decoded as bad instructions and somewhere here it it uh, gets in to sync again, and now here it's in sync and it's decoded correctly. But these instructions, somewhere here uh, in the badly decoded instructions, are the, the one we wanted to hide, the call to ptrace. All right. So let's see if we can circumvent this again with GDB. Let's see, what was the address? of the jump instruction. Here, this one. Let's put a break, breakpoint here. And put layout asm and show the registers. All right, we are here. So step one instruction. Now it's confused. Because we jumped to 42, 642, but 642 is in the middle of between of these two. So these are de decoded incorrectly, and the disassembly don't know where we are. But we can just tell it to de disassemble it on the fly by, say, display, uh, slash, maybe five instructions from where the program counter is right now, and forward. Woo! Now it's suddenly it knows the program counter is at 642. Where is it? Program counter. We can see it at the arrow here. And here we can see it's correctly decoded and not out of sync. But here in this assembly window, it's out of sync. And in the object dump window, it was out of sync. So now if I say next instruction or step instruction, oh, it's going to be OK. Oh. Now I'm in ptrace, of course. I, I didn't want to be in ptrace. It's going to mess things up. Anyway, I could skip this ptrace if I knew. I should have skipped it. Anyway, uh, this is the way you can uh, beat disassembly obfuscation too. So that was actually all I wanted to show you now, and that was the. the uh, obfuscation methods that was shown in the course in week two and week three.